Join us, Alex and Colleen, self-proclaimed fake-it-till-you-make-it experts as we navigate the highs and lows of being a woman and how the pressure and overwhelm of trying to do it all often leads to feeling like an imposter in our own lives. This week's episode features Ashley McGinnis, a PR magnate, movement warrior, mom of three, and a true powerhouse woman. Join us as Ashley shares her inspiring journey to success, including all the pit stops along the way. Hi, Alex. Hi, Colleen. How are you? I'm good. How are I have you? a question for you from our oh yes, shaky box. The new thing we're doing. We're going to ask a question from here. If you were stranded on a desert, <laughs> I almost said desert island. Oh, I'd would love you to be not, stranded on a desert island. I would like island. to be stranded on a desert <laughs> island too. What three items would you want with you? I thought you were going to answer first. Why should I answer first? I don't know. Okay. Well, I was going to say my phone, but we wouldn't have internet That's access. The there's, and there's no one to contact you. That's stupid. I would want a blanket. I Because I always, when I'm sitting on, wherever I sit, I always like to have a blanket on me. There's something cozy about a blanket. So I would want a blanket. That's one. Oh, I would want some sort of a hair tie. Well, I guess I could make that from branches or or something. Yes, hair tie. <laughs> could you? Could I? <laughs> Uh, there must be a rubber tree. You're very resourceful. I am. I'm like, I don't know. I said too. you go, you'd want a hat. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Like, how long am I stranded? I, I kind of want some water, I'm sure. Like, you know. Well, yes. That water, that I'm not going to be stranded for very long. Mark, <laughs> I would like a boat. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good question for us. No, we're dumb. <laughs> but, okay, so let's change it. If you were on a dessert island. Uh, yes. What three desserts would you want? Definitely something lemon. Lemon like brain lemon pie. Lemon obsessed right now. Right now, I'm really in a, in a lemon phase. I'm with you on the lemon lemon meringue pie. Probably something chocolate, like a chocolate cake. Yeah. Know, have you ever had funnel cake? Yes. Funnel cake, I'm obsessed with. So funnel cake. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And birthday cake, because it could mm. be your birthday every day on the dessert island. Yeah. Who the hell would know? All right. <laughs> Nobody would know. Speaking of... Desserts, uh, yes. desert islands. There is no intro. I got nothing to segue into Ashley. It's not her birthday. It's but she probably likes desserts. She like yes. Desserts. Okay. Speaking of liking desserts, our guest today <laughs> is Ashley McGinnis. Do you still go by McGinnis? I do. Ashley yes. McGinnis. Ashley, my <laughs> old time friend. How long have we been friends? We'll age ourselves, we can say. Well, we'll age me. <laughs> you are still young. Because I think I met you when you were... I was still a child. You yes. were, yeah. It, you I was a child with 20s. a gun. I was, yeah. yeah. when I met you. Yeah, probably, God, 12, 13, 14 years. Yeah. It's been a while. So we first met when we were doing stuff with Yummy Mummy Club. Yes. yes. We were at Blog Jam. We were both at Blog Jam. <laughs> and we both did some writing with... Yummy Mummy and Erica M back in the day. Yes, yeah. I invoiced Erica on Friday. You did? Yeah, I still do some work. You for her. still do? do? Yeah, it's great. Oh, I like that. Yeah, she's awesome. And her daughter is local yes, now. Yes, you're going to university. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we picked up a bicycle for her because she found a bike on Facebook Marketplace and it was in Dartmouth. That's so great. Like, we'll pick up the bike, we'll drop it off to you, we'll tune it up. Mark tuned it up because he dads very hard. Oh. And then we dropped it off. <laughs> that's not i love yeah. i loved doing work with erica i she's also fantastic. she's just lovely she's a lot of fun and but i haven't in a while because the kids are all aged out of the yummy mummy system <laughs> apparently rude rude it's rude of them but you now have three so when i really spent time with you you had the one finley finley yeah. and now you've Two more. You sure do. <laughs> you sure do. Rapid fire babies. Yes. yes. Back to back. How yeah. old are they? Uh so Sebastian just turned two on Tuesday past, uh, which is so hard to believe. And Elliot will be four months next week. So it's chaos. Wow. <laughs> it's my house smells just all the time. It's like <laughs> diapers smells. and hockey gear. Mm. which oh. are combined just the two stinkiest mm. yeah. collections on planet earth and it's all boys it's very different having that age big old age gap it is there? really different you've got yeah. a bigger age gap than i had but i had a big age yeah. gap between the kids too it's one of the things that's tough is the developmental stages are so different even from and you know like mark in particular because he'd never been around a baby was like how different could like 
a newborn bee to a four month old. And I'm like completely different species. Mm. Like a newborn is an actual potato. And now like at four months, they need that stimulation. And so we're like trying to keep Elliot stimulated. Sebastian is the Tasmanian devil. He's my wild child. There's no stopping him. And then Finley is now in the full teenage era where he kind of grunts often a response and like was that a yes or no he just heads down to the basement and hangs out there all day it's just so wild how different the stages are yeah so yeah it's chaos this is the biggest treat ever getting out of the (laughs) we'll just like take our time with our questions (laughs) that's right really really Ashley needs extra time. She needs to miss bedtime. <laughs> oh, yes. So I'm definitely missing do. bedtime. That's what I always used to do, like try to time it so I get home after bedtime. Yes. And sometimes actually getting there right before bedtime messes everything up. Oh, the whole system yeah. Off. It yeah. really, it's like throwing a hand grenade. Yeah. Yeah. Tell our audience about Ashley. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ashley. <laughs> I am a mom, as we just said, so I have three boys. I live in Dartmouth, but I grew up in Cape Breton, so very rural upbringing. I've worked in marketing and communications for most of my career, and I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of it in tech, and I was laid off last April at about 14 weeks pregnant and decided I would not lay myself off, and so I started my own business. I work from home. I work with a variety of clients, which is really fun, and that's sort of me in a little nutshell I love to run I bought a Peloton in November so now I'm one of one of the Peloton group I'm obsessed with it yes I love it it's my favorite child (laughs) yeah what else what else can I say I love to bake actually you do yes I would need a KitchenAid on dessert island oh Oh, yeah that's right you'd be making I would be making desserts I would be yeah yeah I actually had a really good lemon pie last night did you I did can you yeah. send us the recipe? I will ask for the recipe. Oh, I don't want the recipe. You, just make you don't want it. Just make me some. Yeah, my friend made it. It was a cookie crust. Yes. With a lemon meringue and then a whipped cream. Ooh, that would be good. On top. Yeah. Yeah. That or would be lemon good. pie, not meringue, I guess. <laughs> That's, I actually prefer that. Yeah, that the meringue just gets in the way of the lemon, you know? Mm. It does. Being laid off when you're pregnant. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I, I understand it because yeah. it happened to me as yeah. well. It's tough, eh? It is very tough. And it broke my confidence for a minute, especially because I think we've come to believe, especially here in Canada, like if you're pregnant, you can't be laid off. Mm -hmm. So everyone was immediately like, they can't do that. Actually, they can. And that sucks. Yeah, It was really scary. It was like, holy crap, I'm about to have another baby. We already have a baby and like a teenager. Our lives are busy and they're expensive. <laughs> Kids are not free. Yeah. So we really kind of panicked there. And I had been thinking about starting my own business. I was half considering that I would use mat leave to get established. So I had begun dabbling, you could say, in I had reserved my business name already, which was just fortuitous, literally a week before. <laughs> being laid off so it allowed me to be really quick and mark kind of looked at me and was like now's the time do it now if it doesn't work out whatever if it does that's great too so how are you handling that with a newborn so you're skipping out on mat leave no mat leave yeah yeah so really start this business with mm -hmm. a newborn on your hip yeah it's been interesting so elliot i like i tell the story and people are like you're saying it so casually i'm like this is my life now Elliot was born on a Tuesday at 10.52 p.m. So I spent that whole day in labor um, at home. And that weekend was Thanksgiving. So Monday was a holiday. And I was back at my desk on the following Tuesday with a newborn baby, which was cuckoo nuts bananas. And I think I've learned... And it's funny, one of my friends actually had messaged me once and she's like, I'm struggling so much. She has a new job. She's amazing. But she has a new job and she's like, I have such imposter syndrome right now. I can't believe they hired me. I wish that I just have my own business. And I was like, girl, you think I don't have imposter syndrome? <laughs> like, I am 
not able to show up in all of the ways that I put pressure on myself to show up. And so I constantly feel like a fraud. Oh, you're doing so great. Look at you with those three kids in a business. I'm like, haven't put Sebastian to bed in days. Like, I have no idea what he's wearing at daycare because I actually haven't even seen him yet today. <laughs> like the the days are so wild. And so I've come to realize that for me, it's like times of stress, the imposter syndrome like blows up and it's overtaking my life. Yeah. I'm- and it's really important that you said we put those mm-hmm. expectations on ourselves. Do. Yeah. So we become imposters of what we yeah. created yes. for ourselves. Okay. Right? Pressure, but I, I think too, too, as entrepreneurs, we do up that game a little bit because it's like something to prove, you know, you have to prove that you can do, yeah. you can prove that you can do all the things you have to prove to yourself yeah. and supposedly to others, but mostly to yourself yeah. that you have to, you know, that everything is perfect and you know what you're doing and you're better off this way, which generally speaking is all true. Yeah. But I've also come to that realization that a lot of the pressure I feel is self-imposed pressure. Yeah. That is not realistic. Yeah. And no one else is looking at it. No one else is like checking off boxes like, oh, Alex didn't do this this week. Yeah. Except me. Because everyone else is busy with their own shit. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I totally relate to that. And I guess the only thing that we really have to, you know, I mean, obviously we have to work and pay the bills and stuff like that. But beyond that, it's, it is, it's the pressures we put on ourselves Mm -hmm. to be successful or- And I like what you said there to prove yeah. that you could do it. So was there part of you that was like, I can do this. And you're trying to prove it to everybody that I can do this. I think so. And honestly, I think I have, I know I have actually, I don't think I have. I know I have had a chip on my shoulder because I was a single mom. I had Finley when I was just 22, like yeah. had just turned 22. <clears throat> I didn't have my education finished. I, at the time was working as a server, which is a very hard and thankless job. A lot of the time and I remember when I decided to go back to school it was like I can't not excel now because there was a bit of like this is going to be so hard for you you should just be happy with what you have and I left you know I left my marriage and my ex and I have a great relationship we co-parent pretty effectively now which is great it took a lot of work <laughs> mm. but you know everything's great there but it, I felt like I needed to prove to everybody that I could get out of where I was as a single mom. And so this chip had stayed on my shoulder. And now that I'm older and wiser, I'm older anyway, I don't know if I'm any more wise, but now I find myself doing just what you said. Like, Am I doing this for me or am I doing this for somebody else? Am I trying to prove a point to the world or am I trying to reassure myself and I don't always know what the answer really is no (laughs) me either and I think that's I think that's a struggle for a lot I think especially women entrepreneurs I think that's a struggle that we're always battling Mm -hmm. you know whose pressures are we battling yeah and it could be a combination of two yeah absolutely because there's also societal pressures too that you need to be able to do it all and you need to run your household and you need to (laughs) be a perfect parent yeah you need to volunteer at the fucking pta and you need to then mm-hmm. also be reaching all these revenue goals and yeah you know being whatever yeah and i think we're not allowed I th- you're inevitably gonna fail somewhere you can't do it all, all because i mean you can do it all you can't fail but stuff. you have to success define is, your yeah. all what is yeah your all? exactly yeah. and i think it's failure because the success is impossible yes like what we set as success yeah. it's impossible so yes of course there's failure yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> but yeah. I am saying that in quotation quotes if you're not Those watching this on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> quotation <laughs> quotes. We should, have, we should have a little quotation quote symbol. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So you're you are I like what you say there. You have to just define what your all is. So you can have it all, mm-hmm. but what is your all? What is what do you decide? You know, you want to be a good mom, you want to be a good partner, you want to be, but you know, you don't have to do everything and you don't have to do everything to 100 percent either no absolutely and my so you know jody mcdonald oh yeah jody and i have this conversation often where we are told that we can't have it all like as women you can be a mom or you can have your career but you can't have both it's like piss off yes i can i can have whatever i want to have i get to define 
my all. And so many women feel pressured to do maybe what's not like true to them. Mm -hmm. And I really grappled with it because a lot of my friends have loved being at home with their kids. I hated maternity leave. It was not, I did not thrive on maternity leave. I hated it with Finley. I was okay with Sebastian because my friend, I actually had friends who were in the thick of it at the same time. So it was less isolating, but I still felt very, very isolated. So I went back to work at six months with Seb. And then it was like, I feel sometimes like I'm grieving the mother I think I was supposed to be. And then that, I spent a lot of time in therapy, but that of course brings up a lot of these feelings of like, I'm not, you know, I'm not that, I haven't lived up to that, but no one else is expecting it from me. Well, it's, I mean, to a point, there is peer pressure to parenting. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's an awful lot of judgment when you're a mom mm -hmm. by other moms that are looking at you saying, oh my goodness, I wouldn't do it that way. Or yeah. she did this, or did you see this? Or did you see that happen? Or did mm -hmm. you see that on social media? There's a lot of judgment there to is. parenting. Yeah. Um, and more, more so, I think, than any other thing you do in your life. There's judgment agree. in parenting. Yeah. And that's hard. So when you're choosing what your all is going to be, and in your case, it's you know, you didn't do the one year yeah. mat leave. You yeah. chose to go back to work after six months. And then with child number three, you ditched mat leave altogether and you started your own yeah. business and you've got a kid on your, you know, you're back to work in a week. Yeah. Somebody else is judging you for that. Yeah. Let them. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, I did. It was hard to let go of that because I did worry about it a lot. And I worried on the flip side of it, of like, I mean, going to meet with clients and I'm six, seven, eight months pregnant, showing up to prospect meetings, or in one case, I actually had the signed contract. And I, was like, I haven't told them I'm pregnant. Are they going to freak out? And with everyone, it was the complete opposite. But I put this expectation in my brain that I'm going to show up to this meeting and these folks are going to realize I'm pregnant. And like, whoa, we got to pump the brakes. This isn't going to work. And instead, everyone's like, and how much time? You're only taking what? Oh, we're fine for the month of October. Like, we can just. You can take more time. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've been made to feel that way, that being pregnant, at least for me, like I basically got demoted when I came back from that leave. Yeah. And, and I remember had to you leave my job that. because we're kind of, we're made to feel like we're less, we're worth less once yeah. we mm -hmm. have different priorities. Yeah. And I find that infuriating because sometimes you're actually more motivated to work harder when you have other, you know, mm -hmm. there's more things to, or your priorities have shifted. Yeah. Uh, but I, I understand why you would feel that way, that nervous that people would think yeah. that you're not going to be able to come to the table as effectively, or that you're going to maybe be sick or whatever. I yeah. don't know what, whatever the expectations are, yeah, yeah. but I'm so glad to hear that people are kind of having a different mindset about that now. Yeah. I think it's moving in the right direction for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I can get more work done in the two hours that Elliot is napping right now than I might have previously done in a whole eight hour day. Right. Cause I know I have a very finite amount of time to get shit done. Like, yeah. Head down, multitasking like crazy, churning things out. And then all of the rest is kind of fluff. You know, he can join me on calls. He's very cute. So I just bring him on calls. No one has complained yet. Yeah. No, <laughs> and yeah, I wouldn't. I'd love to have a baby on. The yeah. You know, the AirPods oh. do the good noise canceling. So if he's, you know, grunting and groaning or something in the carrier and the, in this little, we bought a form. My mom bought me with the four mom swing. Oh yeah. Which I would never have bought for myself, but my mom bought it for me and was insistent that I would love it, which I do. So, you know, he's in there and he's pooping yeah. or doing whatever, making weird noises. No one knows. Yeah. And I'm just like, hope no one can hear these strange sounds happening behind <laughs> me. <laughs> I know that when I was let go when I was pregnant, that was my fear was who's gonna hire, you know, yeah, who's, who's gonna, gonna hire me? Who's gonna hire me? Yeah. I'm pregnant. Who on earth is going to hire me pregnant? Yeah. 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 It's a real fear. But in my own head, I was like, I know where that apprehension does come from because hiring someone 
is a lot of work. Yeah. Like there's a cost to it. There is. is. Yeah. And then the uncertainty of what if this person that we've invested in recruiting, we've now invested in onboarding them. We love them. We're confident we've made the right choice. What if that person decides not to come back yeah. afterwards is it's a fair concern. I don't think anyone should be discriminated for it, but I also don't live with rose tinted glasses to suppose that I would never question those things myself if I was hiring. Serving up hot brews, refreshing cold drinks, lots of fresh baked goodies and delicious lunch options. Visit the Mellow Mug in the heart of Larry Utec for dine-in, takeout, or drive through service. Their spacious cafe offers a casual and inviting vibe that's perfect for everything from enjoying a good book, hanging with friends, or meeting a colleague. The Mellow Mug is your neighborhood spot for great coffee and delicious eats and sweets. Where do you think uh, imposter syndrome first showed up for you? Oh my gosh. I think when I became a mom in the biggest way, because frankly, I had no business becoming a mom when I became a mom. And I tell people all the time, I grew up with Finley and we really did grow up together in a lot of ways. And he has shaped my life in such a big way, but I would feel like I would try to, play the part I guess and then when you're trying to play that part and you yourself know that's not really who you are so I think I I really tried to which now I'm horrified by but at the time I tried to present as so much older and more sophisticated and more mature but then I went home at the end of the day feeling gross about it you know like I'm not representing myself the way I want to be representing myself and so it really crept up and then the first job my first PR job I started my PR program in October and in November we were tasked through part of the program to all find a job advertisement create a resume and a cover letter for it as though we were eligible for that job within our field and turn it in as part of an assignment and as we were in this first kickoff session our career advisor asked everyone to introduce themselves and I was 24 being a mom was basically all I had at that point and I said hi I'm Ashley I'm a mom and he goes no one will hire you you're a single mom no one's going to hire you. You have to hide that. Oh. And, you know, another woman, he was like, you're going to need to lose weight if you want people to take you seriously. There was a man in the group who was gay and he was like, you need to tone it down. Like, this guy was an ass. <laughs> but yeah. that lit such a fire under me that I actually applied for that job that I found and I got it. And so one month into my PR program, I was hired part time to be a public relations coordinator for a maritime area, this regional public relations coordinator. And I went to class in the morning and went to work in the afternoon. And it felt for such a long time, like, when will the shoe drop? And they realized that they've hired someone who doesn't have a sweet clue what they're doing. I haven't even done my program yet. And they've hired me. But it it was great looking back because I got all of that hands-on experience. But I think like 22 to 24, the imposter syndrome totally took over my life. Yeah. I'd say that was the worst time for me as well around those ages. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. 20s, the, your hard. 20s are difficult. They are. You know, you're trying to figure out who you are and your direction and, and you've got all kinds of, and you're failing at things and yeah. there's all these options out there and it's tough. It's overwhelming. It's, it's yeah, overwhelming I mean, actually, difficult time. Fresh out of school or in school in yeah. your case and trying to take those skills and make like take put them into a practical way, which yeah. is very tricky. It is hard to do. It's hard yeah. to navigate yeah. that and in, in, especially in introductory roles. But yeah. 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 yeah it was a wild time. Yeah, it was a wild time. <laughs> it was a wild time. I can't believe I made it through. Well, you did. <laughs> you did. And from there, you know, you started PR program. Yep. You started working in your PR program and now you're running your own PR company. Yeah. Yay. Yes. Yay. 
Yay. Yeah. You. It's a good, it's a good feeling. But then, you know, it does pop up where I'm like, when are they going to realize I know. that I'm not as smart as they think I am? <laughs> yeah, but you are. And I mean, that is, that is the biggest imposter syndrome thing is when are they going to realize yeah. that I am lying, that I'm pulling the wool mm-hmm. over their eyes, that I'm faking it. Yeah. 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 I always feel that. Yeah. yeah same. Yeah. At some point, somebody's going to come in and go, you got to go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. You're not meant to be here. No, yeah. I know. It's a, weird so I've started I call it now so when I'm having I'll be you know driving to meet a client like I'm dressed up nicely today and I want to get there and have them be like this is the most put together well-prepared person ever and then I'll be going through it in my head like what if I what if they realize today that I don't know as much as they think I do or whatever and that is an irrational thought they are not waiting for me to get to this meeting to catch me out on something True. that's not what they're doing no at I all. mean and I have to remind myself too people hire you for something because you are an expert at it and they're not yeah exactly and that is like sort of something I have to keep playing they don't know this they're hiring me because I know this yeah so yes. I know this they don't know this so it shouldn't be you know not to say that I don't also have those same questions as I'm going yeah. to new client meetings and any meeting really for that matter yeah. but yeah yeah, that's hard to let go. I have to have with myself. Like, you know <laughs> this. You've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. You know this. And we will run into, like, like, there's lots of times I run into something that I don't know, but I have, I know where to go find the information Yeah. to figure something out. Like, it even because new things pop up in our field all the they time. They do. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the story of, you know, the factories running and, and chugging along and all of a sudden everything stops and the manager of the factory calls someone to come in and fix it and the person walks in takes a look around goes to the end of the like the other end of the building and presses one button and brings everything back to life and sends his invoice you know a couple of days later for a million dollars and the manager goes like wtf you only pushed one button he said yes but i knew what button to press and one of my clients actually shared that with me recently when i was explaining that i don't have a clue how to do one of the projects that we're working on but I was like I'll figure it out I'll call people I'll see who we need to talk to if we need to bring someone in and he's like love that yeah, I know that you know that. where to find someone who does know how to do this I don't know those people but so he shared that story and I was like I need to actually keep that one mm. in my pocket that's a great one yeah, <laughs> it's a good one it's so good and I actually have used it a couple of times with Finley too when he says like no, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing about this or I need to ask someone. And I'm like, it's okay to reach out and find the person, but you have to value what they're bringing to the table too. So it's value. We, this keeps coming up. We've talked about this a bit lately. Mm-hmm. Your value, it's not always about an hourly rate, for mm-hmm. example. It's Pricing a value. That you bring. It's a yeah. Value and that being you connected bring. to certain people is a value. Yes. Absolutely. And eliminating the person that is hiring you to have to do that work yeah. is a value. Saving yeah. somebody time. So, yeah, you know, valuable. let's let's say that guy that started up the, you know, factory, whether he charged ten thousand dollars, million dollars, whatever, there was value in that not being shut down for multiple days. Yeah, exactly. and, and this is something that he learned over time. Yeah is how to push the right buttons mm-hmm. to get things started up again. Absolutely. There's a value to that. Yeah. You know, definitely. You're purchasing my knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. My experience. And network. Yeah. yeah. And network. Types of imposter syndrome. T- types <laughs> of imposters. Yes. What are you? I, so I was look. I'm literally sitting in my car looking through this. I'm such a people pleaser. I was like studying it. <laughs> Ah, well, you are in good company. Uh, yeah. Table of people, please. Yes. Yes. I keep trying to let it go. I think I'm definitely, and it goes back to being a single mom. I'm the soloist. Yeah. Oh, see, I was also a single mom, but I, I'm not a soloist. No, no. I blame, I, so I blame it on, and you know, Mark will pick on me sometimes. Like it's very well-meaning and he'll be like, you would have your arms fall off trying to carry the heaviest thing into the house before you would ask for help like you will hurt yourself physically because you feel so deeply that you need to do it all by yourself I would 100 percent 
be a soloist in a relationship now. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, but you, if I was in a relationship now after, yeah. you know, 15 years of being out of one, yeah, I would, yeah, I'm going to do that on my yeah. own. And I do it yeah. with work too. I'm fortunate enough that I'm currently at a point where I need to be outsourcing some of the work and could absolutely benefit from having probably a full-time person pitching in on like writing content because it would free up so much of my time. But I am so attached to it being mine and that it's done my way. That's a little girl. Tough. You know? Yeah. Into the choir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <It's... laughs> well, because your name is on it. And Same it, as you. Yeah. Your name is on yeah. it. Right. If they're... So whoever you yes. hire is representing you. Yeah. And they better sound like you, act like you, look like you. They better just be, be me. Be you, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, how yeah. Can I so that's with... tough. I know. And pay myself less. And pay yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Clone less. Yeah. <laughs> Cloning is good. The soloist cares mostly about who completes the task to make it on the achievement list. It has to be you and you alone mm -hmm. because you think you need to do and figure everything out on your own. Needing help is a sign of failure. So he here's an interesting thing. So if you were working on a project mm -hmm. and you hired somebody to do part of that project and you were getting accolades then for the project, would you not feel you earned that a hundred percent because somebody else did some of the work? I would, you? I, so I would give the other person the recognition. I would feel gross if I got recognition for something that I hadn't done myself. If they did just a small part of this. I think, no, I think it, so I'll actually use an example. One of my clients asked for something in Canva and I am good enough to be dangerous in Canva. I can slap some things together, but I am not an expert. And so I brought in a friend who is an expert in Canva to just clean everything up essentially. And at the end of it, I actually introduced him to them to say like in the future, if you need this, you should chat with him. And they were like, this is amazing. It's exactly what we wanted. I'm like, it was all him. He made it look beautiful. Yeah. And, his, and you know, he came back to say, like, I just edited it. So really. then I'm going <laughs> to challenge you. I don't think you're a soloist. Then. Okay, what am I? I don't know. But if you're willing to let go of some of that and allow somebody else to do the projects or work on a project with you, then you're not a soloist. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we're soloist. Heart soloist. Yeah. Because we build pizzas. We build our. The carrying the heaviest thing is definitely a soloist. That is soloist. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So it might be. So we we build these pizzas of what we think we are. And you were. What were you again? Natural genius with a side of. Experts. Experts. Which same as me. And then we both have a little superhuman. Mm, I feel like I could also land on that one. Yeah. I am. Yeah. And I, I can overextend you're myself. You're definitely superhuman. I overextend myself. Yeah. So like, you know, Mark will be, he pulled out the call for like a team manager on Finley's hockey team. And Mark's like, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. You don't have time. You don't have bandwidth. Yeah. You do not need that stress in your life. And it's like, my hand was tingling. Like I wanted to be, because I'm a people pleaser. Yes. I'm like, I'll do it. That's I'll me. sacrifice yeah. my mental well-being. Yeah. yeah. And then once you choose to do something, you've got to do it. Yeah. You've I've got to, I've got to follow through. Follow through. Yeah. Commit. Do it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably a little bit of perfectionist in there. Too. Well, I think the perfectionism for sure. Because you were, yeah. Oh my goodness. You're a little bit of everything. Here's who you are. are. These are I all know. your are cards. I know. Yeah. It's tough, eh? And and then you start comparing yourself to other. Do you get into that? Do you compare yourself to other people? I do, but more on the personal side. Mm -hmm. And I think, so I joke all the time that I disassociate <laughs> when like my life is in shambles as it is for at least an hour every day. Shit's just boiling over somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the baby's crying and I'm like, he's in his crib. He's in his whatever. He's safe. Yeah. I am just focusing on this thing I need to get done whether it's like getting dinner ready or I need to get the laundry turned over workout or whatever it is like he's safe. I'm just going to like remove myself from this situation and have no emotions attached anywhere, which I'm sure means that I'm 
healthy, like a budding I serial like killer. Such a good healthy <laughs> practice. I, you're I right. That is it's, such a healthy practice. It's something I've had to really work on. Like I remember with Seb because he was he always wanted to be held and carried, and so I would have this child in the carrier all day long, trying to do all of the things, and it was not pretty. So we there's a great article about giving away your Legos and just not being so attached to like ev- doing every single task. And I go back to it often because I want to do all of the things all of the time, but I will kind of disassociate when I'm trying to focus on something at home. I f- generally feel pretty confident in my abilities in my career. Ooh. I'm like, I have made it to this stage because I am good at what I do sometimes I waver in that feeling but ultimately I think I've reached this stage of success in my career because I am good at what I do and I love what I do and I want to be better but as a parent I definitely have more of the like the imposter syndrome comes up a lot more in my personal life with my friends with my partner with my kids the neighborhood like that's where it kind of rears its ugly head the most yeah 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 I can definitely relate to that that's why I started going to therapy in the first place Mm -hmm. because I was having like a lot of crisis around whether I was completely screwing Carrie up yeah you know and if I was doing everything wrong and if I was Mm -hmm. you know not as engaged in some of the things that I wanted to be engaged in or thought that I should be engaged in or you know that he was missing out in some way or another because of things that I was lacking on yeah and you know that's still a constant struggle I've gotten a lot pretty far with it in therapy and had some real realizations about it but that stuff can tear you apart yeah it can yeah it really can yeah I mean I remember times with my kids when they were young too trying to do all the things and try to do all the things the other moms were doing Mm -hmm. and it didn't always fit with who I was or, no. and or naturally or who they are, or who they are too. You yeah. know, that is that's the, the that's thing, thing I had to really realize yeah. is that the things that I thought he was lacking, he wasn't lacking. He enjoyed yeah. that space. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh, he's not doing enough. We're not doing enough. We're not going skiing as a family and we're not yeah. doing all these other things. But he was like, I need downtime, which I wasn't really factoring in at all mm-hmm. and had a whole lot of guilt around that. Yeah. Yeah. Parenting stuff. Yeah. When the imposter syndrome strikes, <laughs> What do you do? Yeah. So the first thing I do is call it to say like, this is an irrational thought that I'm having. And that was um, a trick from therapy. My therapist was like, you know, as I was going through it, she's like, these aren't rational thoughts. Like if you're feeling like when you go to hang out with your friends, that everybody's waiting to catch you out on something like, where is that actually stemming from? Is it that I'm having a bad day? Did I not get enough sleep? Like what's going on? So calling an irrational thought an irrational thought helps a lot. And I'm very fortunate. I have a great circle of friends um, and they are fantastic cheerleaders, but they've also helped me become a cheerleader for myself. Mm -hmm. And it feels weird to be your own cheerleader. And I try really hard to be very open about my life because I think it's really easy to pick up your phone and be scrolling through social like holy shit everybody else's life is great and I've got six loads of laundry on the floor in the basement right now that need to be folded and put away and the dog hasn't gotten a proper walk in two days and you know yeah you can start going through your list of all the things you feel like you're not doing so I am like I don't want anyone to ever look at me and think like life's a breeze so I'm like it can be good and it can be hard at the same time so on I think it was Monday of last week which by the time this goes live will be ages prior but I shared like these are the things that are keeping me afloat right now Mm -hmm. and some of them were things that hurt when I leaned into it so I remembered you seeing that you had house cleaner one day and I noticed a couple of my neighbors had house cleaners and I was like I too could have a house cleaner that is not a shortcoming on my I fucking hate cleaning I hate cleaning it takes me a long time I will avoid I'm an avoidance type so I will just not do it and then it's so overwhelming 
But if someone else can do the big stuff and I just have to maintain, then it's golden. So we have house cleaners who come every two weeks. It's and like, it's yes, so nice. I have my groceries delivered because oh it is awful. I hate grocery shopping. I do too. And I hate lugging an infant yeah. in the, the that worst. big, stupid bucket car seat that is so safe. But so awkward it to takes carry. Up the entire cart. It takes up the whole cart. You can't use your stroller. Yeah. You can't push two things at once. It was like, we're gonna pay to have our groceries delivered for the next six to twelve months. We are fortunate that we can afford to make that decision. So that's what we're going to do. So you just started outsourcing, like, why can I throw money at basically to make my life easier? Mm. And then even after doing all of that, you're laying in bed at the end of the day and you're like, I am screwing it all up I'm dropping all of the balls I'm not having intellectual conversations with my partner I'm not playing dinkies with my toddler <laughs> I'm not out shooting pucks at my hockey obsessed child so I, I shared this reel and a person jumped in and was like oh and yet you had time to be self-congratulatory on Instagram and so I sat on it for a second and I was like yeah I actually earn a lot of time to be self-congratulatory by not being mean to other people. And they came back and shit on me more. And I was like, do you know what, though? I will congratulate myself. I worked really hard to get here. And I'm allowed to be proud of myself. And I think we live in a society where, especially as women, if we stand up and say, I'm awesome, it's like, you are not allowed to do that. But then we wonder why everyone has imposter syndrome, yeah. because when you do start to feel yourself and you're excited and you're loving what you're doing, some troll in this is the right, but in left field comes flying in and kicks you in the knee. Yeah, there's always someone there's wanting to take you. Out. Some shit. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, OK, I've triggered something in you. Yeah. And I'm really and, you know, if the the final message that they had sent and I battled disordered eating for a lot of my life and this person finally came in with a you know make sure you tell everyone you've lost the baby weight and you're back in your old jeans or something to that effect and I was like this person is not okay and I'm no longer engaging so did you block them I didn't because this is I your, should. it's your space and you have every right you know to. I have no idea who this oh, person is yeah, they don't follow me I don't follow them I don't know how they found themselves on my feed yeah so it was just really I'd be, interesting I'd be blocking that person they don't need to but do you know what that did it fucked my whole week oh yeah. it for sure it yeah. would because I was like you know should I take the post down and what one of my neighbors texted me the next day and said and I actually I took a screenshot of her message to keep in the photos on my phone hooray folder yeah. yes yeah I have like a little folder of like when I've gotten a nice comment from a client about something, like I will go back and look at it when I'm having a bad day. But she said, your, your content you share has made my life easier. Thank you. And I was like, okay, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. I love your content. I do too. I think it's really real. And as a business owner, I relate to so much of it. I and mean, it, I obviously yeah. don't have, I haven't had infants and or small children in a long time. Don't but, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that ship has sailed. I, can't even, I really <laughs> love my kids. I wouldn't even get a puppy right now. It's, uh, it definitely is shut down, but, yeah. but I definitely relate to the juggling and the new business and, you know, just, just trying to do it all. So yeah. I think it's really great. And I hope you keep sharing. Yeah. I hope you keep sharing too. And do it, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, we're, mul we're so multifaceted. So I'm not my business, but I am my business. I'm not my kids, but I am my kids. I'm not a runner, but I am a runner. Like when you start breaking down all of these different pieces of who you are, and then you feel like you're supposed to give, like I say all the time, this is not the season of life that I get to do mm. X. This is not the season of life where I get to go to the gym. I feel that so much. For 90 minutes and be out of the house and grabbing brunch on Sunday after spin. Like that's just not where my life is right now it's 15 minutes here 15 minutes there it's I haven't washed my hair in seven days and please don't get too close to me because I might <laughs> I might hum at the moment you know you tr you want to be especially 
I think all I know we're a lot of like a lot of like because I know both of you personally as well it's like we always want to be the best of every part of ourselves and when you're not feeling yourself that you're hitting that it's such a terrible feeling yeah it is and then when you've got somebody else out there knocking you down especially when you're in a tough part of your yeah. life it's really hard to pull ourselves up out of that mm-hmm. stuff it can be yeah I yeah. think it's that you know entrepreneurial slash or like high achiever mindset where you're always just trying to do all the things but do them really well because mm-hmm. it gives you self-satisfaction it's not just so much to prove something although oftentimes there's something that you feel like you need to prove just yeah. of society and, and what else but it's just because that's where you get self-satisfaction from doing yeah. the things mm. that you want to do and doing them well yeah and you're allowed to feel good about it and celebrate it and talk about it and say hey you look at me i'm awesome encourages other people yes it does yeah. encourage yeah. other people yeah you're right but it also triggers people who it, aren't doing it obviously yeah so. and that <laughs> says but that says way more about that person than it does about you yeah that person was having a that yeah, that might, crap might be having a really bad yeah. day. And then it's the feeling of, I want to show up authentically and be sharing these things, but I don't want someone to see my content no. and feel bad about themselves that you at the same control. time. Yeah. But yeah. So learning to let go of not being able to yeah. control that. It does make you second guess though. When you, when these trolls come at you, it does make you second guess you, you po- go to post something and then you're like oh, mm-hmm. should I post that and it throws yeah. off I, have, I like haven't somebody. posted anything oh, since then no it throws off don't do that yeah I mean I've done stories but I, I haven't done anything on my feed for a few but days it throws off your authenticity yeah. like it, does, it throws yeah. off your you, you know and I, I I posted something today and went oh, I deleted it like yeah. how often do you post and then I definitely have delete I make things and then don't ever hit. I have a lot of drafts. Yeah. Where I'm like, that's going to come off as too boasty or that's not like, that's going to make me look whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with this post. Was it this person felt I was boasting? But it's not. And, and, you know, I think the other big thing for me is we live in this very weird society where our lives really do revolve around money, Mm. but no one talks about money. Yeah. And so- we have a conversation often at home because we wouldn't let Finley get a cell phone for the longest time. And one day he finally, <laughs> we're sitting at the dinner table. He's like, are we poor? Like, is that why I can't have a cell phone? I'm like, no, you can't have a cell phone because you're 10. Mm. You don't need an iPhone. You're 10 years old. That is not something that you need to have. That is so far-fetched to me. And so we had like, we now try to have very real conversations with him about money. And I think back and I have wonderful parents, but they didn't talk a lot about money. It's only in recent years in like recent months, even that I've known what my dad would make in a year. Oh, I don't, I still don't know what my father would have made. Those oh, were private conversations. Yeah. And I, oh, you, did you know? Did oh, yeah. You? Oh, yeah, the budgeting was huge is... in my family. And it's huge in our family, too. We talk oh. and carry about money a lot. Yeah, and I think it's really important because I was clueless. I went off to university. I had a $10,000 a year student line of credit that opened up every September. And I had that thing gone mm-hmm. in, by December because I had no understanding yeah. of money. I I had no understanding of how much money I should ask for. Like, I know I was underpaid at every full-time job I've ever had. I have been woefully underpaid because I didn't feel confident enough to go back and say, no, I won't work for less than yeah. X. And I know they have the budget when we're talking about big companies, but I didn't have the confidence to talk about money. And so I'm like, now... Um, Kaylee Dimmick actually has, and I sent her a message just the other day to say, you've made me so brave because you're so transparent and you talk about these things that still feel so off, you know, off, don't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. I think women feel like it's off-putting to talk about money and to talk about, or or to ask for more money. Yeah. You know, so if you go into a job negotiation and they offer a 2% raise or they offer whatever in salary, and you're just like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Yeah. No, it doesn't. There. No. I guarantee you, the men are asking are asking for, for the money. Yeah. They're asking for more well, money. They're, they're asking they're for, having to ask for it. They're, and, yeah, they're just being and offered they're, it. Exa- they're being yeah. offered it. You're right. And they weren't raised to believe that their purpose was to be good and quiet. Mm. And yeah. 
yeah amenable to everybody right that, like that's what that's how we still unfortunately raise girls is to don't you know don't cause a fuss don't disrupt yeah. the boat I'm like no knock the boat over yeah is <laughs> burn the bridge burn some, the bridge like burn. some bridges need to be burned isn't it yucky when you look back at a job that you had and then you think of the salary and then and then you're like oh and like the work that you and did the work you did yeah like, oh my goodness yeah you know I could have asked for so much more I should have been paid so much more I or I should have had boundaries part definitely got paid more than me yeah. like it's really gross I, I yeah I look at that a lot yeah and the boundaries too right because you start you feel like you're supposed to be doing all of the extra things. And I think back, I'm like, I, at no point was I ever paid enough money to be on my laptop at two o'clock in the morning, firing things back and forth between someone else. Yeah. Right. Oh, for and sure. And I've done it. And I've done it. Too. Yeah. And I did it often. In fact, Mark would sometimes tell me like, you can't, this is not sustainable and you can't bring your laptop into bed at yeah. 11 o'clock at night yeah to be working on this no like no one's dying but I would feel so I have to get it done I have to get it to them because if I don't they might realize that I'm not as great mm-hmm. yeah so for anybody out there <laughs> listening that has their laptop in their bed yeah you are not paid enough to or have your their, laptop in your or bed their right phone, now <laughs> you know or, or I mean I do have my phone in my room but if you've got your phone in the, in your room to work in case work sends a message mm-hmm. in the middle of the night stop yeah right no. now it's well, the problem with that too is that once you do it it sets expectations it that you're, you're willing, that you're willing to do it so that's the harder part is even once you realize that you kind of don't have great boundaries putting those boundaries in place after the fact is very it's very tricky because you have to retrain people about what you're willing to do and not do mm-hmm. yep. yeah it's hard to put it wasn't until i was in my own business that i yep. and well into my own business that yeah I put those boundaries in place because it's not sustainable and no. you will burn out Mm-hmm. and yeah. it's just not it also people respect you so much more when you have boundaries they do that's what i have to remind myself they yeah. do yeah. they really do it's so hard to do it but as soon as you put structure in place people yeah. respect that so much it's true it's like yeah. I would, that's the one thing i wish i knew from the get-go mm. yeah that's a good tip that is a very good tip yeah, yeah. set your, your boundaries early set your boundaries early mm-hmm. once once you've let it once you've let it go once you've let the toothpaste out of the tube, you can't put it back in. Yeah, it's hard. It's you can. I mean, not with toothpaste, but hard in this work. analogy, you can. It's just <laughs> tricky. It's tricky. A little harder. One of the ways to combat imposter syndrome is to actually listen to how awesome the people in your life think you are. If you're looking for the perfect gift for a loved one, where you can tell them all of the things that make them special, visit my Drawbridge Creative Etsy shop and purchase a Things We Love About You custom poster. With several styles to choose from, it's a fabulous gift for any milestone birthday, anniversary, retirement, or just because. Speaking of setting boundaries... Time to end this podcast. Time to end this podcast. <laughs> we sometimes we can go on forever. I know. Don't you find? And the podcast so gets fun. longer and longer. It is. I love, love. I love chatting with the women at this table. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Speed round. Speed round. We are going to ask you five questions. Okay. Uh, you can answer with one word if you can. We understand that you can't always. What's your favorite hobby or pastime? movement mm. oh just okay. moving my body me too mm-hmm. what's your favorite holiday it is a very toss-up between christmas and halloween mm. oh okay they're so close together so that's a good time of year for you then it is yeah what's the most memorable concert you've attended that's a really hard one i think it was and it's memorable because I lost my cell phone and someone found it and called my grandmother. For whatever reason, that was the number they chose to call was my grandmother. And it was it was very embarrassingly nickelback. Oh, I think it was a wicked concert. I think we need it, to embrace it. It was nickelback. actually a very good concert. And my I, my I friend and I nickelback. wore matching I outfits. Oh, I we need that. to embrace nickelback. Why did we get them? a lot of slack, but they're good? They're good. I could. It was I a good concert. It was a very sing just about every word. Of and I was sixteen, and they were throwing beer out into the crowd, and nice. we like beer hit us, and we were like, <laughs> the beer. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was the coolest. Name the first word that comes to your mind. 
tree. <laughs> Beach vacation or mountain retreat? Oh, that's a really hard one. Right now, I would go for a beach vacation. I would too. Me too. Um, Ashley, we haven't seen each other in so long, and I love sitting next to you. Here, I'm giving you a hug. Oh, it's, yes, it's, awesome. it's so nice to see Me you. Too. I feel like when I first met you, I kind of well, that took you under my wing you a little did. bit. I remember you picking me up to drive right? me to things. <laughs> Days to take you to things in the blogging world, you know, because I also was 22 and had a single mom and had a kid. And, and I really related to a lot of what you were going through. And it is just a thrill for me to be sitting here next to you and seeing how Thank far you've you. come and how much you've grown and... Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to be here with you. You were part of the community that raised me. There you go. Thanks for being part of our Yeah, I'm, I'm our kind podcast. of new to you, but I enjoy you a lot. Yes. You You were my, I had a gym crush on you. A gym I go, crush. I would go to the early morning workouts at Rogue, RIP. Uh, uh, and I'd be like, she seems so cool. <laughs> and then I'd be like, what kettlebell is she getting today? I'd be like, I'm going to get that kettlebell too. <laughs> she's cool i remember seeing you and you were like so pregnant i was and so like pregnant. working it so hard and i was like oh, look at her go holy hell and yeah. literally sent me into premature labor with sebastian oh you were like, in the jump squats <laughs> like just you were running all through that pregnancy too right not with yeah. not with seb i had oh, to give up running with, with seb Elliot. but i ran until like 32 weeks with Elliot I don't know how or why yeah. I was able to that time but yeah good girl anyway thanks for joining yeah, us on the podcast. this is we fun should cheers yeah our new cheers it's our new thing cheers it's our new thing cheers cheers imposter sisters <laughs> oh I love her I do too I have a real soft spot for that girl I always have well I like I said I've only recently got to know her probably in the last year or so maybe a year and a half, but I really enjoy her. When Megan was young, Ashley lived in our neighborhood. And Megan used to babysit for her. Mm. Yeah. Full circle moment. Full circle. Yeah, I really, yeah, I think a lot of Ashley. And I like, I really like her authenticity online. And I hated when she said that somebody made her feel really yucky. Yeah, so gross. It's not gross. I, I don't know why people just, just if you don't, if somebody doesn't resonate with you, just leave. Well, it's Just like we said in our them. episode with Krista, like if, if someone's making you feel badly about yourself, then unfollow them. Yes. You know, it's simple. Just just unfollow them. It's not their fault that whatever they're saying is triggering you. So just move on. Move on. What did she say? Fuck off with you. Uh, off, 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 off you fuck. fuck. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, she didn't say that on. That um, wasn't in the episode. That Sorry, that was episode. after the fact, but yeah. off you fuck. Off you fuck. <laughs> I, like, I like that too. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode meeting Ashley as much as I enjoy spending time with her and you enjoy spending time with her. I think we're done. Yeah. We're uh, done. See you next, next Tuesday. See you next, next Tuesday. Oh, okay. Enjoy. Goodbye. We love you. See ya. Do we? We love them. Okay. Let's Sorry. We, we love some of you. <laughs> <laughs> what? We love you for listening. Oh, we it's love you It's not like, listening. you know. We're not getting married or anything to the entity, but okay, we should talk a little bit further. Actually, hang on. Okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Ashley had a gym crush I, on you. It makes me so flattered. That is so sweet. I love that people think that I'm cool. So I, I, I know I, a lot of people that when I've said I was going to podcast with you and stuff, they were like, "Oh my god, she's so cool. Is she as cool in real life?" You're as, like, "No, well, she's no, really you are." <laughs> No, you are. I think you are. I've got, you know, I don't have a gym crush on you, but only because I don't go to the gym. Well, I mean, I'm not that glamorous at the gym, so I appreciate that she said that. But I've so like had a gym crush on her too, because she's like a powerhouse. That's so cool. Yeah. You guys should go to the gym together. Sometimes we do. I've seen her. I've been in spin classes with her and maybe when the new, our new gym opens, we'll Ooh, be please. there again together. Anyway, signing off from okay. Colleen and Ashley's gym crush. That's right. That's right. <laughs> The cool one. The cool one. <laughs> no, don't come at me, trolls. See okay, you. Bye. Oh, yeah, trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you a troll anonymous message. <laughs> See you next, next Tuesday. Bye-bye.
Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Imposter Sisters. Please remember, we're not doctors or mental health experts. If you're looking for mental health guidance, please see our show notes for local resources. We'd like to thank our location sponsor, The Mellow Mug, located at 64 Delridge Lane, for donating this amazing space for us to have these important chats and for supplying us with drinks and goodies. Please give them a follow and make sure to stop in to see this beautiful spot for yourself. Until next time, keep your head high and we will see you next Tuesday. Are you looking to up your social media game? Social media can be intimidating and overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. At Every Day on Branding, we truly believe that every day is an opportunity to showcase your brand through authentic and aligned social media strategy and content. Whether you're looking for done-for-you social management or monthly strategy sessions, the team at Every Day on Branding can help you reach your ideal audience in a way that feels aligned and drives conversion. If you'd like to have the Imposter Sisters come into your business and help you and your team get comfortable creating social media content, ask us about our new Keen to Screen program a value-packed social media training for anyone that is looking to up their social media presence, either as a solopreneur or to empower their team to be impactful brand ambassadors.